This is the Reflection of Perfection, the number one selection, TRP. Welcome back to Fight Night as we go all the way back in time to 1937 for a somewhat pseudo number one contenders match in the heavyweight division. In 1935, the Cinderella man, James J. Braddock, defeated Max Bear to win the title and proceeded to sit on the crown for two years rather than defend it against the number one contender, Max Schmeling. Schmeling had become the number one contender by knocking out the undefeated Joe Lewis in 1936. After Lewis blazed the comeback trail, he was scheduled to face Braddock in June of 1937. Whoever won basically would face the winner of tonight's fight. Now, Max Beer had never gotten a rematch with Braddock after losing the crown and had worked his way back up by 1937. On April 15, 1937, Bear would step into the ring against the tough Welshman, Tommy Farr. Now, Farr had a string of victories, including winning the Welsh heavyweight title in 1936. He was basically the number one ranked European fighter outside of Max Schmeling, and putting him against Bear would basically guarantee the winner a title shot at Braddock or Lewis. Will Bear get back to the top by defeating Farr, or will Tommy be the one to face the champ? Let's find out. Now, this clip is only about two and a half minutes long, so it's not even going to show any of the fight. Well, I mean, it's not going to show much of the fight, but... A little better than nothing. Heavyweight fight surprise at Harringway. The Eagle Air Wicked Clash between Max Bell and Tommy Farr draws a huge crowd to the Harringway Arena. Okay. Immediately after the gong goes, right, ding, ding, Farr round one. Farr in striped pants wades in, without being in the least overawed by the fact that he's fighting a former champion of the world. So... So this is how Bear used to fight. He used to throw jabs and then he'd talk. So this is just highlights, and that's I'm just going to let the guy talk. Bear is not the least perturbed. A cut over his eye follows him some inconvenience. Bear continues to dominate the fight with a pugnacious left. And Max is apparently having a little trouble, not only with his opponent, but with his shorts, which refuse to stay put. His shorts refuse to stay put. Bear is obviously puzzled at Farr's tactics. The Welshman bobs and ducks all over the ring. And even when Bear does score at close quarters... Ooh, a couple of big lefts by Farr. Gone too is the air of gay abandon with which he entered the ring. Farr is reaching Bear's nose with ease. And one clerk sends the American's head back with a real snap. The contest continues with Farr very aggressive. The Welshman's dancing around on his toes... And the American fat-footed and not nearly so agile. Yeah, Bear wasn't known for that much speed anyway. So far was basically... The curious incident occurred at the end of the ninth round. Owing to the cheering of the crowd, neither of the men hear the gong. And they continue fighting until separated by Mr. Douglas, the referee. Mr. Douglas, the referee. Bear's left does not carry a punch. He seems to be using it for a sort of range finder. And when he does bring over a right, Tommy just isn't the... Uh, what? What was that? Okay, it, it cut out right then and there. All right, so basically Farr won the, the, the fight, right? So I know this was just a clip, but basically Farr won to set him up against the number one contender. To any, as, wait, he was basically the number one contender outside of Germany because of Max Schmeling. So... Schmeling was still lurking, and the rise of Nazi Germany meant he wouldn't be silent for too long. But that's a story for another day. So as of now, Tommy Farr eventually beat Max Bear in this fight to become, you know, the pseudo number one contender, and basically would face the winner of Bear, Bear, Braddock, and Lewis. So there you go. Tommy Farr is your winner. So that'll do it for this on Fight Night. Sorry it was this short. <laughs>